In this video, we are going to go through the procedure for connecting a single phase motor to a supply. The first thing you need to do is open up the terminal box, which we have already done. You should look for the motor wiring diagram. If there isn't one, you will need to make your own by determining which terminals are connected to which components. You can use continuity tests to do this. Here we have our multimeter already on the ohm setting. Remember to short your leads before you start to make sure that your multimeter is correctly calibrated. Now we start to measure the resistance between the different posts. Between posts 1 and 2, we get a reading of 0 0.2 ohms. This near zero reading indicates the centrifugal switch. Make a note of this result on your own terminal block diagram. Between posts 3 and 4, we get a reading of 35.7 ohms. This is quite a large reading, so it probably indicates the start winding. Make a note of this result on your own terminal block diagram. Between posts 5 and 6, we get a lower reading of 11.1 ohms. Remember that the run winding will always have a lower resistance than the start winding. Therefore, this indicates the run winding. Make a note of this result on your diagram. The final two connections in our terminal box are presumably for the capacitor of this capacitor start motor. To confirm this, we need to change our multimeter to the farad setting. When we connect the leads, we get a reading of 42.4 microfarads. Add the location of the capacitor to your diagram. Our diagram indicates all of our results thus far and shows us how this motor is wired internally. Now that we have mapped out the different components, we can draw a wiring schematic for the motor. Now that we have a schematic, we can use it to determine how to connect this motor to a supply. The first thing to do is to number the posts on our schematic. We know that the centrifugal switch is between points 1 and 2. We indicate these on our schematic. The capacitor is between point 7 and 8. Fill these posts in. The start winding is between points 3 and 4. And the run winding is between points 5 and 6. Now that we can see that to correctly wire the capacitor into the motor, we need to connect it between the centrifugal switch and the start winding. In other words, between points 2 and 3. Therefore, points 2 and 7 and points 8 and 3 must be connected. So, we connect point 7 to point 2. and point 8 to point 3. Now, 
we can focus on what needs to be in place to supply power to all the components. We can see that we need to connect both points 1 and 5 to live. To do this, we use a bridge and connect it between points 1 and 5. We can also see that we need to connect points 4 and 6 together so that they can both connect to neutral. We use another bridge to connect points 4 and 6. We can now connect our motor to the supply. We will connect live to point 1 and neutral to point 6. Note that because point 1 and 5 are bridged, we could also connect live to point 5. The same is true for neutral, which we could also connect to point 4. We will also need to connect earth to the motor frame. Here, we have our supply lead already glanded we need to secure it into the terminal box. We connect Earth to the earth post in the terminal box. Connect live to post 1. And finally, connect neutral to post 6. Now that we have wired the motor, we need to do a visual check to make sure that everything is correctly connected and that all the connections are secure. When we are happy, we can connect the motor to a power supply. In its current configuration, the current flows from live through the start circuit. and through the run winding from the top of the page to the bottom. We can designate this the forward direction. If we wanted to reverse the direction of the motor, we could reverse the direction of either winding, the run or start winding. In this case, it would be simpler to reverse the run winding. To do this, we would connect point 1 to point 6 instead of 5. and connect point 4 to point 5 instead of 6. This would reverse the direction of the run winding and hence the direction of the motor. 